can already tell. It's a little exciting. When you see the uh, tools in ministry or in technology basically take off on you and kind of like accomplish things, it's it gets kind of exciting, you know, it's like, cool, Lord, you know. Kind of like watching plants grow, you know, I get a thrill over seeing how, you know, you you start off with just a little plant, you know, and you kind of put it in its pot, and you water it, and give it some sun, and it grows, and it's kind of like you, you know. God plants you someplace and, you know, sticks you in a pot, <laughs> among other believers, and waters you a little bit, you know, prunes you a little bit, you know, gives you a haircut once in a while, you know, and watches you grow. And when you take off, you know, then it's like, cool. It's kind of exciting. That's the way that I think that Jesus intended us to understand what an abundant life is. It's not about the abundance of things. It's about the abundance of growth that God causes in us when we allow him to do what he wants to do with us to accomplish his purposes in the world. And, you know, it's like I keep telling people, look, it is the end of the world. You've got, you know, by the best estimates, 10, you know, if you're lucky, if, you know, I, I hate to say it that way. There's no way you got 15 or 20, but, you know, if you got 10 years, you're lucky, you know. I'm serious. You know, I'm sure that there are people that think that 2012 is going to be some end time scenario, which, no, <laughs> it's not. I'm sorry. It just is, it, frankly, in scripture, it just doesn't cut it. But to be perfectly blunt, you know, anytime after that, God help you. Because you need to have God with you, because otherwise you will not survive the deceptions that will go on, the perceptions of the needs of, say, a political party or a religious social agenda or some idea that you may have of your own that. Once 2012 has passed, there is coming a time of great diversity where people are going to go off onto tangents. They're going to head off in wrong directions. And all I could say is that's about the time that from then on, I'd be watching for the Lord because he will return. And there will be some that will be taken and some will be left. Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. And these aren't people that, according to the parable of the ten virgins, were watching and weren't ready. These were ten that were watching. And five had pretty much really prepared for it and not lost their anticipation. So when he said, come out, let's go, they were ready. Today, in Tozer, Humility, a blessed thing if you can find it. <laughs> he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Luke 14, 11. Watch out, Christian brothers and sisters, for the danger of arrogance in assuming that you are somebody indeed. You know, that's one thing that I find fascinating about, just the fact that I, I write, and people can read something I write and say, well, that's arrogant. And I can say, well, you don't. I'm not sure what you're reading, but I know what I'm saying, and believe me, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with arrogance, you know, but be careful that sometimes you don't get accused of arrogance that doesn't fit as much as we can be arrogant when it does fit, so there's a balance there. You have to let the Lord lead on that one. God will never let you hi-hat somebody else if you are a Christian. He won't let you get the upper hand. He won't let you stand on top of them and act as though you were better, when in reality, you may be worse. He loves you far too much to let you get away with that. You may ask, what will the Lord do then if I get arrogant and presumptuous, full of pride over my uh, victories and <clears throat> successes? Well, the Lord will remind you of his own example and will rebuke and chasten you in his own way. Our Lord Jesus Christ would not allow any success or temporary honor to lead him astray. The Lord had no servants. He bossed no one around. He was the Lord, but he never took the tyrannical attitude towards anyone. 
I think it is very good spiritual advice that we should never tie ourselves up to public opinion and never consider any honors we may receive as being due us because of our superior gifts. In that day of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the crowd exclaimed and cried, Hosanna. But on the next Friday, they joined in the shout to say, Crucify. Humility is a blessed thing if you can find it. Early church fathers wrote that if a man feels that he is getting somewhere in the kingdom of God, that's pride. And until that dies, he is getting nowhere at all. You know, I, I read of and I watch pastors put pastor in front of their name, reverends put reverend in front of their names, prophets put prophet and prophetesses and evangelists and deacons and all these other titles in front of their names. Frankly, I wish they'd put sinner in front of their names because that's what we all are. There is none righteous, no, not one. No one is greater and no one is lesser. God has not chosen a person to be an apostle so you cannot stand up on somebody's shoulders and say, I'm an apostle over you. No, you can't. Sorry. You can come to me and share with me your quote-unquote apostleship, and I'll just say, well, I appreciate what you're saying to me, but, you know, according to what Jesus told me, I'm a co-heir with Jesus Christ and a son in particular, and because he's made me a friend with him, then I am an inheritor of everything that he has, so I'm a son of God. So while you may be an apostle, praise the Lord, I'm happy for you. But I'm only merely a son of God, and I don't know what else I can be except what God has made me to be. And in reality, that should humble all of us to recognize and realize there is no hierarchical order in the kingdom of God. We have a king who is the head of the church. The rest of us are body parts in particular. And at the time that a man thinks he's something, he may wind up being a toenail. So. No offense, <laughs> but we're all sons and daughters of God. So on the one hand, we are exalted with him. On the other hand, if we exalt ourselves, we'll be humbled with him and become less than what we ought to be, which is aware that God has purchased us and chooses us as he determines, not as we acclaim ourselves to be. If any man thinks he is anything, he is nothing at all. And that's literally what the scripture says. God created us, and God bless us, and God keep us, but you got to recognize that your sinful flesh is about all that there is, and that what's inside you is the Spirit of God that's making you into a eventual Son of God.